Hi guys, and welcome to the sideboard. I'm Eric, and you're watching another episode of Deb's Deck. Today we are running Abzan Answers. I'm just working on getting the last few cards we need here, and uh, we'll uh, jump right into the deck. So we still need one more vendor. Mana Traders is working on getting a program so they can put all cards on a single vendor so you don't have to jump around from vendor to vendor. This should be it. Let's jump back over here to Abzan Answers. Take a look at the deck real quick before we get started. Um, so this is a controlish mid-range deck. 100%. Um, I'm gonna say you know, check the little uh, indication up in the top right-hand corner, and check Dev's list for the actual deck tech. Um, I am more or less going to do most of these. Um, devs decks as if it's one of the first times I've ever played the deck I mean I, I've, I ran the deck one time last night just to, to get a feel for it but other than that I I've never really played this deck so I'm going to try to keep it that way with all of them and we'll see where we go from there uh, but to uh, kind of go over the deck really quick we've got some uh, aether hubs to get a few extra points of energy and we have a couple other things that seem to give energy we have um, let's see here. Where's that? There we go. We have uh, fatal push to. Sorry, I'm bouncing all over the place here. A tomb with ether. A couple early black sources. A few early white sources. I maybe cycling would be the only early white source we would need. Uh, the early black source looks really important to us here with the fatal push and the duress uh, double black needed for an early gifted aetherborn and such so we've got a lot of early black sources a um, lot of lands like sack lands here uh, field of ruins is an honorary sack land and then one green couple tap lands here I guess we need the fixing it is a three color deck we're not that heavy on green we have a couple ways to get green it looks like outside the single green plus the uh, aether hubs so land base looks pretty tuned. I, I like the I like to see a, a land base with a lot of thought into it. Um, normally these are a considerable amount of thought um, to to just go that route and say I'll take a land that it's guaranteed to come in tap that you you had to have said okay well this is just something I have to have. So um, I I'm uh, assuming a lot of thought went into this land base and we'll we'll see more as it plays but uh, we've got some uh, some early uh, control here in turn one and then some turn two or you know just cheap I won't say turn two but cheap uh, creatures that are resilient uh, with menace on glint sleeve siphoner you can get in you can draw some cards I love drawing cards gifted aetherborn well I mean gifted aetherborn is you're playing black you pretty much have to play it right now I mean, it's just that good it there's very few other ways that you could actually um, you could actually uh, <laughs> deal with the meta and black without gifted aetherborn I think doom falls I like mainboard doomfall um, you know thought sees is good I guess in standard we just have to pay two more mana for it and then we have uh, some live fast uh, I, you know, sign of blood's good for me. I, I prefer two mana for it, uh, instant speed. But, you know, uh, two energy, I assuming that will be handy to draw an additional card. So, Glint Sleeve, um, this is actually going to let us draw an additional card. So, we'd be drawing like four cards if they don't deal with a Glint Sleeve, and then we turn through this. That's pretty decent. Uh, let's take a look here. Some cast outs, uh, cycle them early or deal with anything. Uh, settle the wreckage. I like this card. Settle's good. 
Mm-hmm. A lot of mm-hmm. a lot of spells up here on the higher end. One Bona, Butcher of McGun. Mm-hmm. Seems decent. Um, Regal is probably so well placed in this meta right now, it's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. And then we have uh, two Varaska mm-hmm. Relic Seekers. This card is just phenomenal. I'm loving it in the meta. And then mm-hmm. some Walking Ballistas. Uh, <laughs> okay. Th- this is like great together. You have Raska's Relic mm-hmm. Seeker and Walking Ballista together. I like that interaction. So we'll see how well that works. In the sideboard, we've got some Ixalan's Binding, Raska's Contempt, Doomfall, Gifted Aetherborn, and Duress. A lot of the same stuff we have main board here. Just more of it. And then uh, Vraska's Contempt is uh, also one of those necessary evils. Most of the time we don't want to pay four mana for a, for a kill spell, but uh, yeah, necessary evil. Um, Carnage Tyrant? Man, we've got some, some serious threats we can pull out of the side here. And then um, sca- Scavenger Grounds, I, I that's an interesting one to have in the sideboard. I guess the mana base is just that serious. Um, Sorcerer's Spyglass. This is a sleeper answer to a lot of the meta. Um, this, this card's better than people give it credit for. We'll, I'm sure we'll find some interesting ways to use it. And then we have uh, Aethersphere Harvester. Um, also seems, seems good. I'm hoping we can keep enough creatures out to crew it. But it looks like once we get to like round turn five or so, that shouldn't be much of a problem. So, oh, we also have Gideon. Um, I even posted on Dev's uh, chat. I'm trying to find out exactly what you would want Gideon for. Maybe the control matchup or something like that. I don't know. It's good at stopping damage. Um, I don't know. I haven't played a lot of the blue-white approach decks that play Gideon, so I don't know exactly what he's good for. Maybe somebody in the chat can let me know the you know what what do we want Gideon for? Why why would we want to bring Gideon in here? Other than that, uh, we'll jump into a league here and see how it goes, guys. Our last league with mono uh, black, we went four and one, so uh, pretty good there. I'm gonna go ahead and jump into this one. So we have locked in our deck, guys. be better probably <laughs> sorry I'm still trying to work out all the kinks on the the streaming so bear with me on that I'm totally up for advice <laughs> something you guys uh, think I should be doing, let me know. All right. Well, we are on the play. We will take the play. This is a really bad hand. We have to use our our early energy to get out that glint sleeve siphoner, which then would give us an energy. I mean, it might pay off, but we've got no color, and it seems like a good mix of lands is what we're going to want in this deck. Now, see, now this this feels better. This feels much better. And I'm even going to put that on top because I plan on trying to draw some gas here soon. And we have some good ways to use some energy. So uh, we'll go ahead and just play. 
play the swamp and pass the turn. I'd like to welcome everybody to uh, you know our most recent episode of Dev's Deck. Seems like people like it, so you know we'll we'll definitely try to keep it up here. A tune with ether for the opponent. Okay, so I kind because we're gonna get more energy next turn. I kind of want to just get out the gifted Aetherborn here. We'll go ahead and do that. And then we'll pass the turn. I'm going to have to work on webcam placement, I think. Harness Lightning for the opponent, killing our Gifted Aetherborn. Well, that's not what we wanted to have happen, but kind of what we expect. Let's leave Siphoners good. If I had one energy right now, I would go ahead and play the Glint Sleeve Siphoner. I think I'm going to just draw some cards here. Since it is sorcery, it is going to take a full turn. There's nothing on the board right now. We'll just draw some cards and kind of go from there. Now we have two energy, and we'll have three when the Glint Sleeve comes down. We can go get maybe an additional white source with this Evolving Wilds, or we can just play this. Uh, save the Evolving Wilds in case we decide we want our green. Uh, but we have an, uh, an Aether Hub, and there's only one thing that's green in the main deck. Okay. So we'll be doing Regal Caracals here soon. So this is going to come in tapped no matter what from this point forward. I wouldn't mind... I need double white next turn though, don't I? Yeah, we'll go ahead and play it. Because I don't want to search up for a planes when I'm holding a planes. Tap plus tap. Uh, we'll just go ahead and play our glint sleeve. Get an energy and then pass the turn. This Regal Caracal, if all goes well, should like he should end up spinning another kill spell. Perfix, what's up, man? Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Anyway, I. Uh, don't think he's going to be holding just fistful of of harness lightnings, but he hasn't played a whole lot, so maybe maybe he will be. Either way, the cat should give us a lot of um, a lot of room to uh, to play with, though. Although Glorybringer, not really good for us. He did spend all of his energy, as if he's he's going for a race here. Maybe we just settle the wreckage off the top. No, we're just going to start chaining off cats. Okay. Um, man, we're going to run straight into this essence scatter, aren't we? We are right into essence scatter. Here we go. Oh, it, it, it resolves. Awesome. Awesome. Sorry if you can hear the little one in the background. He is fighting with his mama. There's no brain. So, yeah, just a fistful of removal. I do 
like blocking here, otherwise we're gonna take six damage. This way we actually just gain one instead. I know I would like to have the, the bigger cats, but... Man, that comes in tapped. We don't have a lot of options here. And we can either walk in Ballista and create a blocker that can then shoot this guy if he goes to try to remove our walking ballista we'll just block with a cat and we can duress this turn um, so ballista for two use it as a blocker and duress um, or we just regal caracol and This just stalls for a turn, and I don't like stalling against, but it would remove some stuff. I like this play, I guess. Seems like it'll it'll be the best for us here. So he's tapped out, so order doesn't matter if we do this first or the dress first. So let's go ahead and see what he's got in his hand. He's holding Forest, Servant of the Conduit. And Aether Hub. Okay. We are not going to attack. Forest. There's a servant. Magma spray. Well, we'll go ahead and remove this now, then. Just like we had planned. card is Aether Hub. We will block here. We're not taking seven off of this thing. Go ahead and sack this because we know he only has a land and he's about to pass turn. Um, just in case we hit a Varaska off the top, we'll go ahead and hit that green. I guess we can get him to bite into more. I mean, this is not our overall win con. So, I mean, we have more stuff coming. So, Regal Caracol gives us some pretty decent blockers here. I mean, we can get up to six. If we just put everything under it, we just lose everything. What happens if we just take it and swing back for seven? I like that. I want to get on the race with him now that I have Settle in hand. Let me 
underneath that queue. Um, let's just go ahead and attack. So we'll do five ping. And pass the turn. So I will settle just the one, but I would also sacrifice the cat to settle a gourd runner. There's a hydra. Okay, I'm just going to take it here. It's a land. Even though he's already played that, we don't need to see those. Okay. Gifted Aetherborn. <laughs> That's perfect right now. We just go ahead and run Vona out. I like Vona. Vona this mm -hmm. seems like a really powerful card. I mean, activate it only on my my turn, but. Mm -hmm. I think we can sit back and keep the Hydra from attacking for a moment. There's a cub. Another caracal. That's pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and play that and we'll just hang on to our gifted Aether born for now. So this is going to allow me to start swinging in. Yeah, he, he's going to go ahead and scoop it up. We'll go ahead and go to game two. Alright, so Teamer Energy. This seems good. Vona seems good. But also seems like it would die to Glorybringer. Although if we hit some stabilization, we, we might be all right. Um, Doomfall seems good. Deck seems fairly well tuned for Teamer Energy. This instant speed removal here might be decent, but we kind of have the rest of things. Walking Ballista is not as amazing against Teamer Energy. I actually think I'm going to take two ballistas out and I'm going to bring in two sorcerer's spyglass I mean long tusk cub hydra chandra can't call can't call the uh, lore bringer but yeah I think I like it like this I'm some debate to the Ixlon's binding, but I think that's more for Scarab God. I know the gifted Aetherborn's decent here. And maybe an Aetherborn over a duress. I kinda like duress in the matchup though. Although Doomfall is more powerful. I like the 
let's do that. Let's go get the Aetherborn and one other decent hard to remove threat. Let's try let's try getting out. Hey cat call. Uh, you can just type in chat. Oh, what deck are we playing against? Sorry. Um, the deck we're playing against is Teamer Energy. So, this is game two of Teamer Energy. We took down game one, so they are on the play. We've got a pretty good hand here. We've got some uh, turn three draw. We'll kind of see what, what they do. Uh, we can turn two, get out our glint sleeve. I think I'm just going to turn one... Evolving Wilds. Yeah, I want to go ahead and start defending the deck of land. <clears throat> uh, by the way, Cat Collar and everyone else in chat, there should be a, a little eye up in the corner of the video, and you can vote on which which deck for me to run next in this series. Also, the uh, devs deck text up there. Well, we don't have the music, do we? I'll have to fix that. Can we just go ahead and get the green? Like, do we even need to? There's no point not to. We have everything else. So, yeah, we'll just grab the green. Well, we'll go ahead and run this out. I want to get a kill spell out of his hand. I'm expecting a braid. turn where he did nothing. Those are always nice. Is this another turn where he's doing nothing? He's got a handful of big stuff. Okay. Well, there's our green. Well. Let's just play that. Go ahead and get in here. Send in a message with our 1-1. One, one. Okay. I would like to draw some cards. I doubt he's going to let me, but we're going to try anyway. piece of action. Two now dead lands. But, I mean, good news is the opponent hasn't done anything yet. He played a whirler. That's, I mean, that's a lot, though. Especially when you make two dudes. And might start getting some action here. Um, I am interested in just pumping my walking ballista. I mean, if we get cats next turn, walking ballista starts living. What good does he do us as a 2 2? What good does he do us as a 2 2? I th think we should go ahead and play the Glint Sleeve Siphoner. However, I also think that we're probably about to see a Glorybringer. If I had Lift Bass was there to at least get those cards off the top of my deck.
So this is all went bad from turn one. Give all the cops. We shuffled our deck, gave us nothing but lands. And we we drew these. We could have tapped, brought them in untapped. We could have brought that one in untapped. We would have just went concealed courtyard, concealed courtyard. Yep, it's a thing. There's the glory burner. Seen that coming. There goes Glint Sleeve Siphoner. Unless he's just wanting to force the option on the walking ballista so he can start making tokens. Nope, he's going to force the uh, on me to draw. This is why we didn't actually go for the just putting a plus one one counter here because Glorybringer would have just forced it to die for two points of damage anyway. And there's a settle the wreckage. This is a really good turn because he's exerted. Um, we can kind of chump block next turn. I'll just go ahead and play the field of ruin because it's not something we need to hide in this matchup. But we can play this regal careful. And by the time the glory bringers untap, um, we should be able to settle for some value. And I think we're just going to pass here. I mean, we will lose one of our creatures in that, that settle, but hopefully he'll add more to the board here, and that'll come in as well. Stack needs some cycling lands, although there doesn't seem to be many. Ooh, okay. This will be brutal. So how do we beat second glory bringer? Because now they're going to be offset until we're out of creatures. about that. That is nice. We do not need it this turn. So we can go ahead and play a tap land here. Let's go ahead and see if we can gain a couple points of life. I'd love for him to block. Okay. Double block. So, I know you guys aren't going to like this, but I'm actually trying to set up a situation where I have nothing on the board and he has no reason to exert so I get both glory bringers seems like I'm asking a little much we're gonna try it seems like it's being really greedy but we're, we're definitely going for it here So there's nothing for him to exert on, so therefore he shouldn't exert. It seems just like a really bad line of play, but, you know, we take it, go to eight. He's got a bonus. I doubt he applies more to the battlefield.
could ah, I just pass. He's got in the gate, we're just eight. Maybe I should have played the untapped land to play around Supreme Will. If we get Supreme Will here, I'm gonna feel really bad. Well, let's see if he's got it. Negate? Yeah, he's paying cost. He's got to negate. Well, we're dead. Let's go to game three. Well, I I kind of like Gideon. Maybe this is the matchup for Gideon. Maybe Doomfall is not so great, or uh, Fatal Push is not so great in this matchup either, and we should be on Garaska's content. If we go Garaska's content, what else do we have for kill? We're not going to outvalue them. We have Roscoe's Contempt. We have Doomfalls. Let's go Fatal Push. So let's not bring in the other Gideon. Let's try up the Gideons for the Fatal Pushes. Now let's go that route. Although they're trying to go a control route. Maybe two push to duress. Let's try that. Like if they're trying to go the control route, I want to be able to disrupt their early stuff, but I want to have some hand disruption too. I think with the three Doom Falls, Doom Fall pulling the double duty with the Edicts, I think I think this will be much better. Is there an argument for bringing in that third Durrett, or the third and fourth Durrett, just be done with Fatal Push altogether? Kind of think we need to disrupt them. Let's just run it like this. Okay. Well, we got our fatal push. We got our doom fall. We've got two lands. We get to look at the hand so we know whether or not we need to doom fall. This seems seems really good. I I. I even a decent time to get this so next turn we're just going to sorcerer spyglass and pick something so they can't activate abilities bone tusk cover would be awesome to call but we get to look at their hand there's a cast out Let's go ahead and do this. So what do we want to make sure they cannot use? We have a fatal push to deal with Long Tusk Cub. I would like to deal with Whirler. Make that a 2-3 for the rest of the game. And Bristling Hydra. We'll try to make that a 2-3 for the rest of the game. Okay. So we're going to go with Whirler. Oh my god, I didn't realize my cat was here. You 
sneezed. Yeah, I realized he was there. So the plan here is to hopefully get to another land so that we can go kill Long Tusk Cub, Sorcerer Spyglass, Hydra. So Hydra is just a 4 3. And then Doom Fall out the Glory Bringer. But we need that third land to be able to do it. And there it is. All right. Deck's doing good. Okay, so let Wally's tapped out because we know he's got in the gate. Let's just go ahead and deal with this. We'll answer this, this problem. And we're going to answer that next problem. Whirlers dealt with. Bristling Hydra. Okay. Hydra. Done. There we go. Let's see. All right. Well, um, whatever he cast, I mean, it it's going to be fairly generic. That cannot make dudes. There's another land. I think we're going to go get the... We're just going to go ahead and get... We're going to take a look at his hand. See what new has been revealed. We're going to go ahead and dismiss, dismiss everything we've already seen. So we've got... Chandra coming up. And I kind of like getting rid of Chandra. I'll have enough mana by the time... See, I'm not going to have four mana to deal with Chandra this turn. If he untaps, draws a land... Yeah, we're, we're going to get to Chandra because we can deal with the Glory Burner with the cast out or and then turn six deal with other stuff, I guess. I mean, Whirler's still going to be hitting us. He didn't stop damage. That's Gideon's Intervention, which is also a great card. Underplayed. And I, I like Gideon's Intervention. I think if, you, if you're going to play um, a card like Lost Legacy or something of that nature, why wouldn't you also play Gideon's Intervention? gonna grab the forest because you know I want to make sure I have that it's decent for us so now we can cast out go get our swamp Beats. Whirler Beats. So we will grab that swamp. And we have double black. We don't really need the attune or the um, ether hub. But we did not get our next land. So we'll play this. And if he gets land stuck one more time. We'll cycle this into turn. I'd like to start ticking, ticking Vraska up. Okay, so there's a harness lightning. So that's gone now. Now we know he's got negate, which is going to be rough for us to get out of his hand. We're kind of hoping that we hit a land right after he hits a land. Okay, 
this is good. We just keep stalling here. It's a pretty good stall for us. I mean, yeah, he's got cards. I'm sure he can answer this. <laughs> he really wanted to be able to answer that. Okay. But we just made him use his abrade, so that's that's decent for us. We will be cycling this turn though. There's his land. Okay, so yeah, we definitely need to hit it. He could skip Hydra and go straight to Glorybringer though. Let's go ahead and cycle. That's decent. So even if we don't hit land, we've got... Ooh. Yeah, we're going to do this. Yes, it's risky, but I want to draw some cards. Let's take us to 10. He can take us to... He top decks on land. You're in some trouble. Oh, man. I didn't even think about leaving it up for the gifted Aetherborn. Didn't think of my possibility of drawing that. It might have hurt us. Should have left that a tune. Or Aether Hub up. Okay. That's decent. Um, so we can get the negate out of his hand with a doomfall. Let's go ahead and play Gifted Aetherborn. Okay, so there's an essence scatter. Let's go ahead and get the negate. We might not get the negate if we go for exiling a creature he or she controls. Let's try that. Let's try to just get rid of the whirler here. What's up, Riker? How you doing, buddy? We're fighting Teamer Energy, buddy, and we're in game three, and it's a... Uh, he's been stuck on lands, but we're, we could really use another one ourselves. I'd say we see Hydra here. Which means next turn we'll see Glorybringer. Still has the negate. We pull another. If we Varaska's contempt this, he swings with Glorybringer next turn. If we don't Varaska's contempt this, he swings with Hydra to put us at four, which is a two turn clock. He doesn't need Glorybringer, but he may just go to close it out. If he goes to close it out, then. Otherwise, this is going to be really risky by passing turn right now and not killing that Hydra. I'd rather take four than get this countered and take take four anyway, I guess. I mean, if he just plays Glorybringer, then hey, yeah, there we go. I knew better. Um, so we'll go into... Varaska 
Roscoe's contempt here. He can't spend his energy because we have the Sorcerer's Spyglass calling, but he keeps holding the gate. All right, so he spends the negate. We take four anyway, unless he can shoot this, and then he can probably just kill the three monsters. He can't do that. All right. So there's our land. So if he has pulled another negate, we're dead. assume he's got the other negate then. No, he does not. Alright. Well. There's a Hydra. He's still holding Glorybringer though, guys. No way to gain life. We're still dead. I mean, we can kill this. Still, we die to Glorbringer in his hand. Well, he drew enough threats other than Glorybringer. He didn't have to play the Glorybringer. And we knew we had it. So. That's game. Thanks for subscribing, subscribing Miguel. So, that was game one against um, Kamer Energy. <clears throat> We put up a really good fight, though. So, I would have liked to have seen, like, a Regal Caracol there or something like that. Something that could have, you know, gained us a little bit of life. Uh, we we kind of ran into almost everything that actually took life away from us. But not really anything that was giving it back. So, Although he was able to destroy our gifted Aetherborns. We are on the play. Uh, we're going to start out with... Mulliganing. Well, it doesn't look any better, does it? I mean, were we supposed to just keep... Um, okay. We're going to keep this. At least it has two things. There's another. All right. That's brutal. Control deck on a mulligan down to... Five. That's on the play. My son is in there saying very bad things to his mother. I don't know what language it is, but yeah, I mean, if if we can get something decent out of this live fast here, we'll be all right. Unfortunately, we're just playing lands and passing the turn here. I'm jealous, Riker. You got to meet Reed Duke, man. That's that's. I should have went. Should have went. Uh, we're just going to draw cards. More land. So I get it. The deck has to have its lands. And when it doesn't, it... Like what happened to us last game. So last game we got the six lands. Or our five, five mana and then just stalled out. Aetherborn. I assume he's got plenty of kill spells. And pass. We 
already have double black, double white, so might as well get the green. We got another white coming here. I will say that, though, as far as the lands have gone, the, the deck seems... Um, the deck seems good. He's also running a braid. That's the big change I've noticed in... in uh, Teamer here lately. They're, they've upped their count of a braid again, pushing the artifact that decks back down. Like um, God Pharaoh's Gift and uh, Oketra's Monument. Those decks are pushed back down. They'll come back in a few weeks, though. And with uh, Pro Tour coming up, I'm, I'm quite excited to see what we have. Okay, let's see if we can get a blocker down here. Uh, we need this life link to... Uh, pay off for us in a serious way. That's not good. Oh, I need to let the cat out. Thank you. Well, we're just taking a beating here by Team Rear Energy. Well, we just passed the turn. Doubt he swings in with everything, but whatever he doesn't swing in with, we um, we get the doom fall. I kind of figured that. We got the counter. This is game one, right? Shouldn't have negate. need what? Fatal push off the top. Another settle. Um, well, we're dead. He can make three. He can make three thopters. So on board, he's got one, two, three, four, five, six. Because of the, he can make three thopters, he can also make and sack those to our doomfall, which we only have two mana, two Enough mana to cast one of which, which and he's got six, nine on the battlefield. Well, he, he can do that, or he can protect himself from these doom falls. He could put more damage at us through the through the cub. You're right, but I'm looking at how I could clean this board up, and a, even if I cast doom fall and make him spend three energy on sacking a Thopter instead of one of his creatures here, it would um, it still leave him with eight energy, which would be making the cub a six six. And he would still be swinging for ten. Okay, so if we live fast, draw fatal push, kill cub. We're at six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and he makes two thopters. We're dead. And, um, I mean, I'll live fast because that—that's our out. But pretty sure we don't have any, any real outs here. Yeah, we are dead. It's unfortunate. Um. Answer's deck seems to just be a little slow here.
And there's a glory bringer to seal the deal. 100% believe there needs to be some fumigates. And let's go into game two. Okay. Would have loved to have had a fatal push in that last game. I'll say no to Vona. I'm going to say no to a walking ballista. I mean, remember, this is not a ballista deck. This is a, a card we want to see as the finisher. got a lot of, let's let's look at what we can bring in the spyglass is great the carnage tyrant's good gifted etherborn is good and two Veraska's contempt with the f whirler is with every teamer energy deck running yeah there's no there's no fumigate in the entire 75 on this deck with every teamer energy deck running Whirler, it makes Doomfall much, much worse. Well, at least this is a hand we can keep. I don't know if we'll ever get to the settles. But, I mean, we can get down. We can kill something and we can get down a gift of the Aetherborn. And the deck is loaded with land, so we should get somewhere with this. Yeah, I did that. I hit OK. And it went straight to my end step. Oh my gosh. Forgive me, fellas. Forgive me for that. We are now on the draw. <laughs> and he got to draw. <sighs> okay. I'm so sorry for that punt. Total oops on that one. I know I punted this, but wow. Okay. We may still get time. Do we just run it out? He doesn't have a red yet, but what did he get? He went and got a mountain. We know he's about to play his mountain. Let's run it out. And then we'll pass the turn. And if he plays his red and kills it, then he kills it. So that means he won't play a creature this turn. And we'll buy yet more time. I 100% agree that the deck needs Fumigate. Like, Settle's a good card. It allows you to keep pushing forward and being, you know, and pressuring and things like that. And I really like it as a main board option to these decks. But I, that's pretty good for us. We'll go ahead and see if he swings on the or kills this. I'm definitely like. 
like to start chipping in at live totals here. I mean, the deck feels uber powerful. I mean, it just feels so powerful. Like the cards that you're playing, they're, they're, they make major impacts on the field. You know, they settle the wreckage, deals with almost everything. Um, Fatal Push, one of the most powerful kill, kill spells ever printed. Varaska deals with anything, can take over the game by herself, protects herself. I mean, these are, these are some extremely powerful cards. I am going to offer a trade here, though. keep pushing damage if he wants to fight back currently we're still winning the race we're doing eight point swings each turn we swing until he kills one I would actually like to hit a live fast right now keep with this for now. Effectively, that Hydra did nothing to us last turn. I assume this Glorybringer will, but... Where it? Yep, Glorybringer. off the top would be nice. He wanted to pump, but he did it at the wrong time. Oh. Double push here. Make him spend it all. Guess not. There's a live fast. I'm just going to play Walking Ballista as a chump blocker. And then we'll pass the turn. So Live Fast was really good right there. 
Back-to-back -back matches versus Team Rare Energy. Not cool. Another glory bringer. Oh, dang it. All right. Well, he deals with this, and then... I guess we go ahead and chump block here, stop the damage. got a little bit of a, an inkling to sack this Evolving Wilds, and it just depends on what he plays. If he plays like Rogue Refiner or something, I'll sack the Evolving Wilds to kill that. Dear gosh. And he's going to scry too. That's not good for us. I mean, we've got an answer, but... Depends on how he plays it, though. It may turn out really good for us. presenting that that spell pierce I guess we're going to see if he has it he's got spell pierce we're pretty much done can gifted Aetherborn and pass. I mean, like, the greatest thing in the world that can happen for us is him to ultimate Nissa and just swing. With everything, of course, you know that would be amazing, but he's not going to do that. We are basically just begging for our opponent to make a mistake here. Let 
that happen. Well, you will live another turn. How we deal with that ultimate, though, that's... That's gonna be interesting. Those lands are flyers. Or haste, or something like that. Flying? Yeah, flying and haste. Cast out off the top would be really nice. I did not take the cast outs out. Alright. Oh, that's not good for us. Because we can only deal with Glorybringer. Only. Oh. Well, the only thing we can do here. Play a Varoska. Kill Glorybringer. And die to the board. This deck's definitely putting up a fight, but it I can't seem to get value. I, I can't swing the edge back over towards um, Teamer Energy. Like They just have all the tools necessary to, to stop our game plan. I think for this, de this deck to do really well, and I don't know what its matchup is against everything else, but I think for this deck it's going to need 100% uh, added Fumigates somewhere in the 75. The second thing would be it's going to have to catch the right meta before it's going to actually have a standard chance at doing something. And that's pretty cool how it puts that border on there, that little text. <laughs> So that was game two with uh, our Ab or devs Abzan answers deck, and so far Teamer Energy and Teamer Energy has just really put a hurting on us. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into game three. Hopefully we'll get something other than Teamer Energy. I would like to play against some other matchup, see how well the the deck fares in a a different matchup. I know not all. LGS's out there are just full of teamer energy like mine, but um, actually our, our LGS is um, filling up with control right now, isn't it, Riker? You're still around. We got a lot of approach over in ours. Never did get that music up, did we? Let's fix that. I need to grab some more more music. start out with Bowser is pissed. And our match is up, so here we go. Game three with Abzan Answers. So, this is decent. I mean, I've got early pressure. It feels like a mid-range or an aggro deck here. Which may also be a problem. Like, I don't think a control deck should ever f have draws that feel like, man, this could go aggro. Um, we don't have any way to discard this or get rid of it later. So I'm guessing turn one we'll keep. So we're going to keep this. We'll turn one the Forsaken Sanctuary. Alright, so we are against blue-white something here. And we are holding our worst cards. So we'll play the tap land Forsaken Sanctuary. Enters the battlefield tap. Period. No cycling, no nothing. Um, and then now we'll just go Concealed Courtyard. And I actually want to get this little fella in. I'm going to cast this guy on like turn four. 
or six. I don't know. I guess the smarter play there would have been to actually play the Aether Hub and then play him off of that so I would have had two energy to be able to draw a card next turn. That would have been the better play. I'm sorry I didn't see it at the time. Could have given us more card draw. Could have got us where we needed to be. It's my fault. My bad. We'll get in for two and pass the turn unless he has an early answer. So I will say this though, I mean, we're definitely going to throw him off guard when we're all of a sudden start playing Regal Caracol and things of that nature. Yes, we would love to draw a card. Let's go ahead and get in. We'll grab that other. I'm just gonna go ahead and play the Aether Hub here, and we'll we'll let him glimmer. That's what he's wanting to do anyway. It's not like we could stop him. He's not going to stop this. I don't think he'll counter the walking Melissa. He did. He censored it. Wow. Okay. I assume he doesn't have a way to just clean up the board next turn. That card's really good. Well, that happened. And we'll pass the turn. I know you guys are going to crucify me that, that I haven't won a, a single game with uh, Dev's deck here. Just play our tap land, pass the turn. There's his glimmer. Would love to play Doomfall, Duress, you know, one of those main board cards we have plenty of copies of. Would be nice. I would not judge this deck off of one wing. try to play this beauty. I mean, if I untap with it, I'm going to swing and then try to kill that. <laughs> See, that ain't even fair, man. That ain't right. I don't get to play with my cards. Okay. Hey, guess what? We drew another land. Oh, curses. Curses. Well, there's the first copy. I'm going to say game one matchup versus approach. If you don't hit your discard spells, it's over. You know? Look at that. At least we will get a chance to thin our deck. We're, we're going we're gonna to get rid of those things. Point three percent out of the deck. It is turn ten. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
ten lands on the battlefield. Two more in hand. That's interesting. Well, I mean, I assume we just cast out on his turn, try to get Vona back. Bone back, we can just kill that. I mean, this has to resolve first. It's Supreme Will, I'll pay for it. No, that was a disallow, that was a real. Well, attacking Gideon's not non-existent considering Gideon has locked our port dude down. He can't do damage. Hey, there's a card. Yes, there was an argument to fatal push my own guys to keep him from gaining life. I don't think it matters. Look at that. Turn 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 lands. That is brutal. It is really brutal, guys. Oh. Gideon into a 4-4. Four four. He's getting in there. Nothing we can do about it. Live fast. Let's let's look for some cards here. Look at that. We got a fatal push. And we are going to hit our 14th land drop. You know, for some people, making sure they hit land drops. Exactly what they're looking for. I'm sorry guys, I'm on tilt. I wanted much, much better things for this deck, but this is brutal. Hasn't he already drawn the approach by now? Is he just not getting it? We did it! We did it! Achievement unlocked! We have hit our full 15 lands. Evolving Wilds for nothing. Yeah. And we're still alive. Just cast the approach, dude. Thank you. Just tap your mana. Show it to me. Can get out of this game. Okay. Um, fatal push gone. Duress in. Doomfall in. This is not a gifted Aetherborn match. This is a Blunt Sage Siphon match. Spyglass seems decent. I got two spots left. Let's go for Gideon. We're going to drop the Settles for two Varaska's Contempt and an Ixlon's Binding. Fifteen land drops in a row. That's... That's impressive. Impressive. I guess... This is game, what is this, game three? Game three with our deck.
match three, game two. We are going to. That did not turn out the way I wanted. Alright, we are on the play. No lands in this hand, so we can mulligan that. We cannot keep this. Well, I mean, we have lands. I don't think we can use a Baraska right now. We need something a little... We have three tap lands. And we'll just keep playing out these tap lands. I am going to uh, cycle this cast out. Or maybe I should hang on to it. I don't know. There's an op for the opponent. Cycle this. Sealed courtyard. Let's try it. I just don't think it'll land, but if it does, we'll see what happens. And there's a negate. Let's leave Cyber. This is not bad here. I mean, we don't have any other forms of energy, so this is what we've got. And he's not going to let us have that. Yeah. Cannot pay three. We'll go ahead and crack this. We have all of our other colors, so we'll just grab the forest and pass the turn. Well, not turning out very well for us, guys. I mean, we've we're, we went. Looks like we're not going to do well here either. I mean, granted, it's not over. I know I'm being really pessimistic because he just tapped out, and we can care. I'm right, so we'll pass the turn back to him. He plays land fumigate. We're we're definitely back out of it. He just pluses on the carcal though, so we might be able to get in here at Gideon for a point of damage, a couple points maybe. It's like he's gonna miss his fifth land drop too. All right, so he's gonna cast something out. Actually, he's just gonna cast that out. Okay. Well. Let's get in at Gideon. Oh, Gids. Get in at Gids. And then I'm just going to duress. I need to, uh, I need to find out if he has an answer for Vona. And he does. So I'd really like for him to glimmer on his turn next turn. Let's take that Dovin. So he glimmers, we play Vona. We get back 
back in at the at Gideon with another point. Okay, so he's just gonna keep up plundering that one. All right, let's see what happens here. Hey, kids. So there's the glimmer, just like we expected. There's one glimmer gone. Buddy gets two more cards in his hand that we have no clue what are. What they be. So the main reason I took the Dovin Bond away is because it would be able to keep Bona from ever being able to activate, considering the way Bona is red, is activate this ability only during your turn. So, 100% we're doing this. Uh, so, we're going to duress him. See what he's got. Land count real quick. Five land. Ooh, we're looking at approach. Yeah, let's say, uh, let's get rid of approach. Torrential's gonna give him, so he can't torrential this turn. He can't stop me from casting something this turn. Yeah, let's get rid of approach. We will play this little fella, Clint Sleep Siphoner. Now, even though this damage has been prevented, we still want to kill Gideon. So, kill Gideon with this cast out, like popping the cast out. Pay the seven life. We get Regal Caracal. More kitty cats. Hi, Gids. Try to get in it, Gids. Bye, Gids. And, alright. So, we're back at it. We, he needs to pull something that can stop all of this. Well, he got his land. I hope he's just, he thinks he's just going to Torrential Gear Hulk block something because that's going to be funny. Nope, he's going to cast this out. All right. It has to be this. Well, if he casts Bona out. Like, he can't cast anything other than Vona out. Yeah, that's what I thought. So, Vona's really good in this matchup, guys, where there's cast outs and things of that nature. Like that card. Hit that land drop like a boss. It's okay, though. We're, we're about to punch a lot of damage in here. Maybe we can just not run into Teamer Energy and come back and go 3 0 in the uh, last half of the league, league here. I would love to play Infernal Card. Mm -hmm. Activate ability of sorcerers with a chosen name can't be activated unless they're mana abilities. Mm -hmm. Duress. Pull from the mob. Uh, 
of the sunken ruin. Okay. So now we just swing into this gear hole. Sir. You can glimmer. Yes, sir. I'm just going to say pass the turn here. There's nothing we can do. We'll see if we go to game three. There we go. Um, Drop two Forsaken Ruins for two Scavenger Grounds. See if we can stop that as Kanta. I, I mean, if he's got if he's got <coughs> Scavenger Grounds in the sideboard, there's got to be a matchup for it. And if as Kanta is not one of those, then I don't know what it is. I, I'm sure Esper Gift or something like Gift uh, God Pharaoh's Gift would be one of them, but I don't know. So, um, what do you guys think of the setup? I mean, y'all, I'll keep running the, the decks if you guys want them. Okay, so we have, we don't have Doomfall. I mean, we can go get our Black Clan if we need it. Start cycling. I like it. I don't want to. I don't want to mulligan that much against this this dude. He's already mulliganed once. He went down to six, so he took a scry. Yeah, this is okay. I'm just gonna cycle. There's no point in hiding the information. Another cast out. All right, so we'll just pass turn. There's his search for Ascanta. We get to live fast, so at least we can start spending energy here. Let's go black. And maybe we'll even get to chip in for a couple points of damage, something silly like that. We're not going to get to draw a card next turn off of the uh, Lens Leap, but we can at least. Oh man, come on, Gideon. Alright, so a concealed courtyard, which is really, really good for us. Um, this is a good time to just take this, uh, take a look at his hand. Rip out a good piece of gas, something that would, would help him a lot here. Ouch. All right, so... He's got sensor and negate. Okay. If we can get rid of Gids, then... We're good. I'm going to keep the cast out. We're going we're gonna to hit Gideon with... Um, Oh, there would be a point in swinging. I would still get the energy, wouldn't I? Yeah, should have swung anyway. Sorry, interaction I hadn't, hadn't run into yet. I, uh, I'll swing next time, just, like, no matter what. Although I do think that we go to draw this turn. I mean, he's got that sensor in hand. I mean, he did play his land... Yeah, so we'll play sensor protection, and then we'll do live fast. Alright, can't play that yet. We'll go ahead and swing. I didn't even think about the, the interaction. Uh, even if Gideon has this stop, 
you know, you still want to swing to get the additional energy. Okay, so he's just not throwing things in his graveyard with Search for Azkanta. Which is interesting, I guess. Yes, we're going to pay. Well, this comes in tapped anyway. Let's go ahead and play that. to Raska's Contempt get in, but let's do this. There's a disallow. Okay. So you still got... Undo. I want to keep this up for cycling the cast out. don't think I'm really going to want to, but... Something may change, and I may have to just really start digging for an answer. So why would he disallow? What does he got other than censor? I mean, he no longer has the censor. Approach? Could it be approach? Maybe it is. that anyway, even though it can't deal damage. Okay, more tapped lands. If he's tapped out, I'm gonna be done with Gideon here. Same thing as last time. Okay. Uh, yeah. Hi, Travis. Christopher. What's up, bud? Well, we are in game three here. Um, we've played Teamer Energy and Teamer Energy, and now we're against Blue White Approach. So it's been um, a tilting set of matches, to say the least. Let's go ahead and doomfall our opponent's hand. Fumigate and another search for Ascanta. Well... I guess we gotta get rid of Fumigate. We can... Play that. We'll just go ahead and drop this. Go ahead and grab the forest because you know, she's still in here. Yeah, I mean, it, it just tilted me hard, dude. It was like, come on. We drew, we hit um, 15 straight land drops. It, we were on turn 15 with 15 land with no ramp. Yeah, that happened. That, that happened, buddy. So he just played a land. One, two, three, four, five. We will draw a card. This is great for us. And now we start casting Regal Caracals. Might be able to end this game out pretty quick from here. So. Well. I will say that the deck is powerful. Um, 
Dev rated it as a 9 with his rating system, which I don't know exactly how he does that. He's probably got a video up about it somewhere I need to go watch, but uh, he rated it as a 9 on power, and the deck is powerful. Like, the plays that we're making, you're, you're stupid powerful, and there's an answer to everything in the deck. Getting that answer when you need it, or not getting it when you need it, is tilting. So, I mean, it is a powerful deck, and the games were extremely close against Teamer Energy. I'm just going to play this Duress, take a look at this hand. Uh, we're not worried about that search for Ascanta. One, two, three, four, five, six. So, let's take a look here. One, two, three, four, five. And we still pay for... Oh, we took the Supremo. Right? We're good. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. This should allow us to, to do some damage. Flint Sleeve Siphoner has been no joke. Well, thanks for joining us over here, Christopher. He put it in. Is he going to flip it? He flipped it. you have to do it now, fella. I'll even thin your deck for you. Let's be done with this. Because you have to pull an answer right now. So, if he didn't find Fumigate, he found Settle. That's, that's pretty decent. So is that. So these are the kind of plays that are just stupid powerful that the deck has. Like, you're seeing it, man. Like, yeah, he just went and searched. He got a settle the wreckage. And we, you know, top deck take it away from him. And that was blue white approach. I mean, the deck is powerful. Man, it just feels so bad when you're just drawing 15 lands straight in a row. But that's that's nothing on the deck, you know. Um, it's just one of those things. Ryan, I'm glad you are, dude. The uh, Ryan Davis. I know you. Anyway, um, name sounds really familiar, dude. That mono black aggro deck is the real deal. That thing is no joke. Massively powerful. I picked it up for the first time, went 4-1 and one with it. I know exactly. I thought that was you, Ryan. Like, I, I was like, God, we play. you're the one that always plays mono black. So, yeah, it makes sense that you... That you, you would like that deck. Well, dude, I was not, believe it or not, I was actually thinking about you when I was thinking about that deck. I was like, he would be playing this. Um, the deck's good, though. All right, guys, so we've got turn one, turn two, turn three, and two lands to get there. Yeah, we'll keep this. This isn't that bad. And we're on the draw. Well, Ryan, thanks for checking out my videos, man. Uh, what do you think about the? Uh, what do you think about it so far? The channel had a goblins deck in modern and and got flooded a few times. It had to run. Yeah, man, it, it just always feels so bad when you you get 
flooded or, or something of that nature. And I tilt hard. So I tilt real hard. I'll try to keep that in, you know, reined in, especially, you know, since I'm, I'm going to be streaming some magic at some point here. I'll try not to, to let it bother me too much. I don't know, you guys might like seeing me rage out. So, there's no reason to not get the green, is there? No. We don't need double black at any point soon. So, yeah, let's go ahead and get the green. And we'll just start playing concealed courtyards and getting our dudes killed. And at least we're going to be able to play turn three um, live fast. I like that spell. Like, live fast is good. Excuse me there. What do we got? Whirler. Okay. So how do you guys feel about trading our Doomfall for a, a token and getting in for two? Or, I don't know, we could trade Fatal Push for a token. Or we could swing, kill the token, use his three energy, and kill the Whirler. Mm, I don't know. I also kind of like Doomfalling him right here. That's good. Okay, so... I don't necessarily need to live fast right now. Let's live slow. Let's calm it down. Well, if we do Doomfall and take a look at his hand, which is probably one of the better choices for us here. Maybe we should swing first and see how he does. So another option is we can actually pay two mana, cast Walking Ballista, and then keep up Fatal Push, we can kill the token, Fatal Push the Whirler, and get in. Seems like a lot more action. I think I'm going to go with that. Yes, I'm going to pay the green. Okay, so we get a one. Now we can get in. Take our energy. He makes a dude here. We remove it. We remove this too. Get in for two points of damage, draw, um, or get some more energy so that we can draw a card next turn. He follows up with. Land bristling hydra, we doom follow. That's the plan, anyway. Oh, you played against mono black, black in uh, GP Vegas or GP uh, Phoenix. What were you playing, Ryan? Another thing about that mono black deck is it, it's like less than a hundred bucks, it's not very expensive. Oh, well, we're hitting land. this one because we so if we live fast here we're guaranteed to draw yet another card next turn if this lives I mean we know we're going to attack but now is probably the turn to, to do fall I mean, we're on turn four Raiders, one more heart. Let me know. I have a couple heart of Kieran's, but I am trying to put the deck together in paper. But uh, I've got like two heart of Kieran's. If, if we get to like Thursday before you got it, just hit me up and I'll bring the cards for you Friday night. All 
right, so the target opponent, we're gonna we're gonna take a look at his hand. See what he's got. Wow. He's decked. Decked. Alright, so I'm okay with him committing us, so that's not a problem. Glorybringer is a couple cards away. He can play Whirler. I think I can deal with Bristling Hydra. We've played our land. So next turn we get to drop Vona, which is good. If he misses his land drop right here, we're, we're okay. Well, then he didn't miss his land drop. He got it. Although he might miss the next one. Foil Jace and Nissa for store credit to get two. Foil Jace and Anissa for two Fatal Push. Fatal Push really that expensive? I mean, I, I know, like, online they're only like two or three bucks, but... Wow. Okay. some cards. Maybe the argument was to get Vona down, but I don't know. We are going to go ahead and duress. I know we didn't have anything last turn, but we're, we'll just go ahead and get the commit. Because he can cast that now. Spending his energy, and there's Glorybringer. Okay, so Glorybringer comes down, we lose Glint Sleeve. Then we play Vona, he untaps. So they played that, he still got that. We got rid of that, he played the forest. And now he's played his Glorybringer. Um, so Glorybringer attacks, exerts on this. This is pretty bad for us. Sixty percent of card value. That sounds about right. It's like what stores do. Okay, so we got Vona. He didn't make Thopters. He can't swing. would be game. Okay, still five damage on board and we're tapped out. So we'll go ahead and jump into the sideboard. This is our third game versus Teamer Energy in four games. Wow, well, I should probably update the record. All right, against Teamer Energy, the fatal pushes are... I guess this deck actually hits Revolt pretty good. Carnage Tyrant, we've yet to see him, but I know he's good. Sorcerer's Spyglass has been really good for us in these matchups. Doomfall's good. We'll drop a cast out. We need the settles. We'll drop Duress for the other Doomfall. I don't know if Varaska's Contempt's good or not here. Maybe it is. I think we're just going to have to get wider and go bigger than, than Teamer. 
All right, so here we go. I mean, this is keepable. We'll come in tapped here on turn one. Pass the turn. And then uh, next turn we can play our swamp, run out of gifted Aetherborn. And try to start getting in. the turn and he's if he's gonna spend his turn to you know the entire turn wasting uh wasting it on um killing gifted age born i'm okay with that we will see all right well we're gonna start drawing cards for sure let's go ahead and get in This is more along the lines of how the deck was drawn up, how the deck was supposed to play. And the deck does feel a lot better when it's firing than it does when it isn't. We were firing in that first game against uh, Teamer Energy. However, Teamer Energy just just put out too much too much pressure that we, we just couldn't keep up with it. Yeah, we were fighting back, but nowhere near to the point we should have um, kind of like where this is going I am just going to walking ballista here he may just essence scatter it he's got to be holding something up here with his two mana yeah, he has scattered it. That's to be expected, I guess. There is a rogue refiner. So we're going to sack this. We'll go ahead and grab... We're going to go ahead and grab our other white source. We'll save this for green if we have to. And then I'm just going to fatal push said rogue refiner. This is a card they typically want to trade with your Aetherborn. Okay, well... Sorcerer's Spyglass. And see where we want to stop. Um, since he has four energy already and two Whirlers, I would hate for him to just be able to Whirler, Whirler, Whirler. We have double Settles to um, deal with the Hydra. So I'm going to call Whirler Virtuoso. Whirler, Virtuoso, not making Thopters. So Sorcerer's Spyglass is really, really good, guys. I like it in the Teamer matchup. It may be a little slow, but Teamer is full of creatures that activate abilities. I mean, we've seen Harsh Mentor starting to get some play in the red decks and things like that. So, I mean, what's up, Crew Fix? Welcome back, buddy. Uh, we are currently 0 and 1, or sorry, 1 and 2. Um, I don't where did I get 0 and 1? We're at 1 and 2, and we are in game 2 of this match, in our fourth match. 
This is the third time we have faced Teamer Energy. It has been Teamer Energy, Teamer Energy, which we lost both of those. We beat Blue White Approach, and now we are against Teamer Energy yet again. Well, isn't this interesting? So we can live fast here and Sorcerer Spyglass again. So let's let's just live fast first. We'll get our land to play. And then we'll go ahead and cast Sorcerer Spyglass. He hasn't gotten anything new. Alright, so we'll go all the way down to the Ether Lord. Essence Scatter, I mean. So there's his hand. Okay, so we're gonna go with Hydra. Can't activate it now, buddy. You can block with it if you want. Sorcerer Spyglass doing work. Thanks, man. I um, I like my stash. It's a lot of work, even though I don't put enough into it. All right, Hydra gone. No problem, man. Posted something about uh, thanks for playing Dev's decks. I, I'm a fan of Dev myself. I, I am always playing his jink at FNM or my versions of his builds. Or I didn't have the cards for it, so I put it together the best I could. You know, things of that nature. Uh, we'll go ahead and get down Lint Sleeve here. Essence Scatter. Come on. We got the Essence Scatter, so Essence Scatter is gone, Whirler is gone, and he played the Hub. We don't know about one of the cards in his hand. How do we want to look? Let's look. I mean, we're still at 22 life. We can afford. We can afford it. Okay, so we'll dismiss that. We're going to take the Whirler. He's got two cards left in hand. And then we're, we're done for the turn. We just got to deal with, with the Whirler and whatever else comes next. And just keep getting in there and waiting for our, our Caracals to come down, things of that nature. So I'm thinking about like thinning the deck here. I mean, this card's not amazing against teamers. They don't run any of the new flip lands. Um, you can barely hear me talk, honestly. I will check that. Um, microphone volume seems to be up. Let me know if, let me know if that's any better. Okay, so we're gonna thin here. I uh, we will just. Just pop a, a hub, and we'll pay. We'll go ahead and get our green. So we're gonna pray for a Veraska here. And now that we've thinned a little bit, we'll go ahead and cycle. 
Hit yet another land. All right, there's some action. There we go. So we'll drop this caracal. Now we've got a little bit of action. All right. I'm glad we got that essence scatter out of his hand so he couldn't essence scatter this. Oh, no problem, man. I, the the stream is, like, really new, so I get it. Some people can hear me well. Some people can't hear me really well. So, you know, if we can find that nice balance for everybody, then, hey, seems like a, a plan. I wish I could read your name. Looks kind of Russian. Is that Russian? He doesn't get in. Another caracal. All right. We'll we'll play it. Do we swing for four here? I mean, is there any point? Do we? I mean, we lose a cat. We gain four life. We deal two damage. I mean, we're still trying to pressure him here. But the following turn, we'd be able to swing with all of them, and he would only block. So I think if we wait one more turn, then push in. I'm here to tell you guys, this card is good. Sorcerer Spyglass. Uh, we were able... Yep, that's a 4-3. Hydro on one, Whirler on the other. Don't worry about it. Um, I'm just swinging with these things and not my, not my cats. I'll let him keep the Whirler. I want to kill the Hydra. So he'll take four here. We gain a billion. And we fatal push a Hydra while he's got 16 energy. It's going to be an achievement, right? Achievement unlock? Has to be. Has to be an achievement. Oh my goodness. Um. Just gonna keep keep turning things sideways. We'll punch him in for another five damage here. We hit a walking ballista. Gonna be brutal. I wish those had cycling. I would love if, if those lands were like the the cycling deserts. Mm. No point in swinging with that. He's just going to block it. If he blocks it, he's going to block it. So next turn, if he blocks one, then we'll see. He's got to draw a glory bringer eventually, right? Servant. He can't activate that. I, I do not have a way to stop that. By the way, guys, this is a better answer to Teamer Energy than Solemnity. I have, I have drawn Solemnity so many times, and they already have energy. And it's like, well, what am I going to do now? This is better. Yes. All right. So, Roska coming out maybe to finish everything off. We'll get rid of the 2 3. Go ahead and get in.
Right, right, exactly. Pithing needle, get probe put together. It's good. I I like sorcerer spyglass. I um I really like that card. Okay. Um I think we're already sideboarded the way we need to be versus teamer here. So we'll just run it back. You know, I'm actually going to trade this cast out for this six lines binding. Like, if we could turn four, stick something in his hand. And another thing, I mean, I might have done, I might have done really horribly in those first two matches against Teamer Energy because I hadn't learned how to like play the matchup yet. Like, again, you know, we just pick up these decks and you know go play a league. Um, but now that I've looked at it a little bit different and um, you know the Sorcerer Spyglass and things like that. This deck actually has a really good chance against Teamer Energy, I think. So we can get our white here on turn one. But we wouldn't be able to turn two Gifted Aetherborn. I'm okay with turn two Gifted Aetherborn over the alternate. I like this hand, though. I like two, two of these. Um, and we're on the draw, so. All right, well, we just play our Fatal Push Mana. Pray he just goes Forest Servant. Although Forest Servant's not always great. Okay, so he's just going to kill our Gifted Aetherborn. Then I'm not going to run it out. <clears throat> At least not this turn. I'm going to go for the turn three, live fast. If he's not doing anything, and I'm not being pressured, I don't think that I should go after him yet. really want to just draw these cards. Like, if he's scared to play his threats right now because I'm holding Fatal Push up with Evolving Wilds, then, hey, we're winning. So I can't, like, live fast right now. Because I would just be discarding something. So we will go ahead and do it now. Alright, so he's got an Essence Scatter. He's playing the Control Plan. Alright. I hope he boarded out a lot of his threats. If you guys do buy this deck, you play this deck, I I hope people made it past my tilt long enough to um, see it have a chance against Teamer Energy. Although this is this is bad. Okay, so now we're definitely going to start drawing for some land here. This comes in tap no matter what. But it is the color we need, so we'll go ahead and play it. Glorybringer. Yep, it's Glorybringer. Alright, well that's coming. Okay, so we're not out of this. Let's go Evolving Wilds. Ixlon's Binding. And be done with Glorybringer. And we'll grab our green. We're gonna take a beating here on the backside, but if he doesn't play another creature, or at least as long as he doesn't play something over three mana, we should be good enough. Like if he plays just a two drop or yeah, a, a, a cub or 
uh, a servant, we're in a really good position. We know he's not playing another glory bringer, so back to back glory bringers is not going to be a thing. Him destroying the. Okay, so that's. It's a little rougher on us. We will definitely need a better answer then. Okay, so concealed courtyard. Alright, so we'll go ahead and play that. Now, if we caracal, I guess at this point we are we do just start running down these caracals. Essence scatter. Oh, it's game, guys. That's game. So the reason I couldn't really doom fall there is because he had lethal on the board, and we had to deal with the board at some some form or fashion. If I would have doom falled then he could have just made a single thopter and then uh, he would have I w he would have sacked the thopter and then we would have still had lethal on the board so we pretty much were stuck going for a caracal that was our only out and um, he had the answer to it so there you go and that's what we were hoping he was going to play last turn. If he would have played this last turn, then we would have, you know, fatal push that, and then tomb followed the Hydra, and we would have lived, but he was able to play around it uh, quite effectively. Um, the other question would be, why didn't we cast out? Uh, if we would have cast out, he could have made this in, in his um, Hexproof. If we, he would have cast out on the... A Whirler Virtuoso, he could have just made two additional dudes because he did have the energy. He could make up to three guys, or he could make this Hexproof and then make two guys. Either way, uh, he had the additional three points he would have needed. Well, guys, um, not a whole lot of point in running this last one, uh, other than we paid for it, so let's get our money out of it. So... Christopher, take care, man. Thanks. Uh, well, we'll be running, you know, Deb's decks at least once a week. There will be at least one gameplay of it. Like, there's enough call for it. You guys want it bad enough that I believe enough people would watch the videos. So, if people want to watch the videos, I'll make them. I will take responsibility for, you know, my punts and things, but I, uh, other than that, well, we get, okay, so we get a turn one, turn, t well, we would have to actually, we'll keep this, we'll just, um, get rid of the, we'll use the evolving wilds first, let's do it right, we'll do it at the end of their turn. But anyway, there's, there's more than enough call for, you know, someone to four out of five today, guys. Four out of five energy decks. Maybe this one will at least be Sultai energy, so we have a different matchup, so we can see, you know, how the how the decks match up against Sultai. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a planes, so we at least have some cover, and it gives me a planes. Anyway, so we will play this. Um, but yeah, there's enough call for Deb's decks to be run that. People will watch it, and if people want to watch it, then I'll run them. Okay, so we are against uh, Salt Tower Green Black Energy. At least it's a different variant. It's pretty good for us. Now, he's got energy, so... I'm going to Fatal Push this. It's a horrible use of our mana. I really would have, like, rather have doomed the ball, but I don't want to let him draw an extra card. I know that was loud. I'm very sorry. Third shot. Uh, 
I got the label on the can turned right. That's why nobody can see it. Channel not sponsored by Pepsi. <laughs> Although I'll take one. Okay, so we're going to draw a card here, which was the point. Um, I just really don't want him drawing cards, so I'm going to exile this as well. I want to be the one drawing cards, not him. base hasn't been overly difficult for us. I mean, it's it's for the most part just given us what we wanted every turn. Uh, so I, I think Dev did really, really good with the land base. We'll go ahead and move fast. This seems good. We'll go ahead and duress. Wow. Didn't we do that in just in the nick of time? Alright, so much mana does he have? He's got four. If he top decks a land, he could play that and leave Essence Scatter up. I mean, I'm taking Veraska, but... Yeah, we'll take Veraska. Although I could cast out Veraska, so, I mean, maybe just taking the Essence Scatter, but I really think he's just going to cast his Rogue Refiner here. There's a rogue refiner. He gets in. Regal Caraball here would be terrific. I've been running Regals in my uh, my Vesper reanimator list, and I think the card's phenomenal. So he tapped his blue land. So we're just going to play Regal. And then we'll pass the turn. Pass back to him. Um, I assume we see yet another Rogue Refiner. Yep. So we know he still has Essence Scatter and two other cards. I will block the attacks. And he did. He got in. Alright. Well, we will make these trades. I will trade two cats from Regal for, and four life. Two rogue refiners. Almost any day. Well, we're going to duress first. So his hand consists of Forest Long Tusk Cub. Which means I should probably start digging. I'm going to cycle this cast out. <laughs> I'd rather have a cast out, but I also don't want to land. I don't want to waste this Regal Caracal here. We've got two more in the deck, and getting to a slightly larger Regal would be huge. He's got enough land to make this thing monstrous. Or enough uh, energy. 
Ouch. So we played all of his cards. Well, I guess we'll play a few of ours. Um, we'll have him exile a creature. So we can get rid of his draw guy. There we go. All right. And we just passed turn. We cannot swing into his cat. His cat trumps our cat when he's got 14 energy. And he's going to draw a card. Exactly what we're looking to do. We definitely... <laughs> Well, it's going to be hard to draw out of this. Although, drawing a kill spell would be really good. So we let him pump. We get a kill spell, we get to kill Hostage Taker and get our Regal Caracal back. Um... I see the grip really good when your opponent's held in. Okay, here we go. What do we draw? Yes, we'll take a life. We'll draw a card. Okay, so this is about as good as it gets for us, guys. And that is why Hostage Taker <laughs> Yeah it was. <laughs> which uh which one of your favorite three kids here do you wanna you wanna throw off this bridge? Um I guess Rogue Refiner was the more sacrificable one, you know. It's uh it's like the first trial. You're already you're just so happy that it happened. bad joke. Although he does have to get through to Veraska here and we don't have to do anything other than jump jump. Like we can just start taking Veraska up to a turn and probably take over this this fight. Yeah, he can't get through right now. Yeah, this is all really good for us, so I'll go ahead and create a dude. And I want to gain some life. need to gain a lot of life, but I do want to gain some. Just enough that I can continue to feel safe. Like, I don't want to stay below like a point where he could just kill me. I mean, this is a walking ballista deck. He's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So he could just walking ballista like four. Bam, done. Um, and we could walking ballista... One, two, three, four. We could walk in Ballista four. Or we could live fast. What would we be looking for if we live fast? Um,
The deck is definitely powerful. Maybe I should have shot that. Maybe I should just shoot that now. I think I'll definitely shoot that on this turn. Or do I not? And just swing in next turn. I'm 99% sure he's just dead here. There we go. Um, okay, so... We're going to drop the cast outs. I do like Gideon or Ixalan's Binding and Frasca's Contempt. I like Sorcerer's Spyglass. I think I'll drop a dress. Then we're going to drop uh, two duress here. We'll keep the Doom Falls. Actually, maybe we'll go ahead and drop the other duress and bring in the Gifted Aetherborn. Of course, this is the last game. Maybe we should uh, try to bring in Carney T. Let's see if we can get a little, little action in there. Well, it's not amazing, but Lens Leap's good. I mean, we are going against a Fatal Push deck, but we'll see what happens. Okay. Well, we got our push, so... starting to pull action here. I assume he stops this somehow. Although he's got no black. There went a black. Schwamp. Schwamp. So guys, uh, those of you that are still watching, still with me, uh, click in the top right hand corner you'll see Deb's deck tech for this video or for this deck and you will see the poll for what deck you would like run next so he's got a couple good options out for us um, personally my vote goes for Jess Skies I think it's well placed in the meta right now I'd like, I'd like to play a deck that was getting up in the air so uh, just guys would be you know my vote but absolutely let me know what you guys think and uh, we'll we'll get in here and we'll run some decks so we're just gonna try to do caracol 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 um, make him deal with these with his um, spells and then we'll we'll play Avona and kind of go there. If we get him Hellbent and then we play Vona, we should be okay. Although hostage takers are a problem. We will be requiring some type of assistance from the top of the deck. It's not it. We would have settled for Fatal Push. I'll be thinning the deck now. That's brutal. Brutal. Pop 
stop this. Yeah, we're gonna give him some land, but whatever. I want to thin my deck. I know it's only point like point zero three percent or point three percent, something like that. It's a ridiculously low number, but still. We already have our green. Let's go ahead and get the white. Essence scattered here. And if he supreme wills, if supreme wills me, I'll feel real bad. But that ain't too bad there. Depending on what he swings with here, we may be willing to just take some of it. Another hostage taker would just be a nightmare. Yep. That's how these things work best, chaining them into each other. How much damage are we taking? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We just take it. us there, but we will attempt to gain some of our life back. Teamer energy matchup, I'm going to say it's about 50-50. The deck did fight against Teamer energy. It, it put up a really good fight. And then, um, Die Young, wow. This must be the list from, um, not SCG Dallas, but the one that was played in, it was played that week. Block this, block that. We take a bunch. So if we're playing for our outs. We just play this and pass. I mean, he's like contemplating this pretty hard. I don't see why. I don't know. Maybe I, if he didn't hit a land, he's not drawing this. And if we un, I don't know. Like we can't, we can't use this. Really? Uh, why don't you take your own hostage taker, dude? Well, that's it, yeah, guys. We take four here, no matter what. Okay, 
so we block that, we block that. And then before damage is dealt, we sack this and pretend like we're going to, um, you know, do something. And we tap this. We concede the game. All right. Final game. Here we go. Um, blasted. I still like the way we're sideboarded. I don't I don't see anything I'd really change. Maybe take the two Doomfalls out for two cast out. Like maybe we want the targeted removal. Hostage takers. Die Young is, uh, it was played in that first week, uh, they were doing like mocks or something like that, the, the week of uh, SCG Dallas. Uh, the Jessubs took a list that, you know, that we're all really used to, uh, to Dallas, but someone else took a list that had like a Verdant Gear Hulk and was running uh, Die Young in theirs. And Die Young seems really good. Well, we can't keep this. This is doable. How do we feel about cast out here? Need more land, right? Speaking of land, let's go ahead and shuffle the deck. Okay, so it's going to be our last game, guys. I hope everyone enjoyed the show today. Let's go ahead and get this glint sleeve out. I'm pretty sure that you just call Long Tusk Cub in this deck. Activated. This is a triggered ability, so this won't do it. I think next turn maybe we just die, um, run the live fast out. Yeah, this is pretty decent. Um, we're not going to run live fast out because I want I don't want him drawing cards. So we're going to do that. We'll go ahead and do the spyglass. And spyglass says that we call long tusk cub. It's better effect infect affect this game. Uh, so let's go ahead and dismiss all on that. We're going to click. Okay. Probably shouldn't dismiss off. Uh, long tusk. I think long tusk. Okay. We'll go ahead and get in. We'll still get to draw a card next turn if he doesn't kill us, which he didn't have the kill spell, so. Wish I hadn't have cleared that. Okay, so he gets another. And he's going to push ours. It's a very valid argument. Push mine, I push yours. Uh, these all look good. So we'll just pass the turn, wait for him to do his thing, and go from there. Slamming Vona here. Never mind. I forgot that he has that counter spell. Although, we can just play this and make him spend it. Or not. Maybe 
he's like, I am stopping a cat. Or maybe he top decked a... That's a thing, right? I think we swing here. I don't see him blocking with the Scarab God. Alright, so what does he get back? Glint Sleeve. So he doesn't get to draw a card this turn. And because we got rid of the Scarab God, he doesn't... Well, that's a thing. I like it. So, next turn if we cast... Pretty much has to ultimate, or he has to uh, kill Varaska to save Varaska. Okay. Die young and live fast in a budget blue uh, blue black control deck during Kaladesh. First deck build uh, that really worked. Got the idea from Dev's video. Try it out with him. Dev makes great videos, man. There's so many of us that have, you know, gotten our best ideas straight from his deck. What? Oh, hey, Varaska's gonna tempt him. Gates it. All right, well, I guess he tries to go for the kill here. He's probably got us with this Varaska anyway, but I'm definitely going to try to give him some land. We staved off for a little bit, although he's just going to make a pirate, tick up to seven. There's the pirate. Play a land. So if you get hellbent in this deck, you are stuck. not going to thin on his turn, on my turn. I'll thin on his turn after he's already done his thing. After he's already drawn, I'm going to make his draw better. Yeah. Well, I'm going to destroy your other one. Because it seems cool. Right, um, and, and you know what? That's one of the, the best parts about Magic is I can see a certain card. <laughs> a buddy of mine, like if I see any white Infect card, because like no one ever plays them, um, but a buddy of mine had used to have this mono white Infect deck. Uh, I hadn't seen him in like 10 years. And 
and uh, the first time we met again, we sat down at a magic tournament, and we played, and he was playing this mono white infect deck. Was the deck good? I don't know, but he beat me with it, and um, that's going to be game, guys. Maybe not, not yet, but it's pretty close. Uh, anyway, he. every time I see a, a white infect creature, any of them, it's just it's awesome. Okay. Nebraska can't ultimate yet. <clears throat> He's gonna put us at two. Nebraska's ultimate would do one point of damage. We get a fatal push. We're doing it. We sack our land like masters we are well guys um, that's pretty much it he's he's got us kind of destroyed here um, I don't know if I should actually put anything to the end of these decks but I'm playing them so I'm going to um, so if you stick around for a few minutes we're gonna go over and we're gonna look at the deck list itself and after playing it, some of the thoughts that I've had while playing it, I'm, I'll, I'll just really quick wrap up. Uh, we'll take our, our 20 free points here and add that to the collection, and maybe we'll get to play again later. All right, so one of the first things I think this deck really, truly needs is Fumigate. A lot of them. A lot of Fumigate. This deck is missing Fumigate. Where is Fumigate in this deck? Other than that, seems seems decent. The deck put up good fights. Um, at no point did I feel like I was just getting run over. Like I felt, and at no point did I go that I really feel like there was just no out left in the deck for me. And I believe that if we would have had some Fumigates in the deck, that it would have it would have changed that a little bit. Like. Um, uh, it, it's just a much better feeling when you know that there is an answer in the deck that you can count on that and it, it's the little moment or the little things like that in the deck that that can make you stay in there till the end and, and not scoop early and then you'll get those opportunities where you do top deck um, you know the greatest thing in the world and that doesn't happen to a lot of people because they scoop early you know, why, why does it never happen to me? Why do I never top deck the one card I need? Well, do you scoop as soon as you think it's over, or do you stick around and, and make the opponent tap their lands and kill you? Tap their creatures and turn things sideways and kill you. So, um, for the most part, I think the deck just needs some Fumigates. I have no clue why Gideon is in this deck. This deck does not need Gideon. Um... It may or may... I'd hate, I, I'd hate to play it against a tokens build because I think eventually they would just continue to go wide on you if you couldn't get to your duresses to deal with things. Um, but if if you were able to wipe the board somehow, I, I think that that would be much more effective. Scavenger Grounds, I think mm -hmm. Ixlon's Binding can deal with almost anything that Scavenger Grounds... Mm -hmm. Gabriel, you missed the whole thing, dude. You're kept, you're coming in on wrap up, bro. Um, all in all, though, the deck is is very strong. Our matchups against Teamer Energy were not the greatest, and I admit that you know I definitely made a punt or two. I know the I know that one game I should not have played Evolving Wilds turn one. I did nothing but draw land after that, and um, it's just. You, ne you never can know that is this one land going to going to change the outcome of the game. But looking back on that game, I know that the outcome of that game was changed because I shuffled the deck. If I hadn't shuffled the deck, then I wouldn't have got the draws I got. So it's my fault for shuffling the deck. So the turn one evolving wilds was what what broke me. Um, that's what I can blame it on anyway. That was an action that I did, and and I definitely think that you know. 
it's always your fault when when you lose. There's something you could have done, whether maybe it was my fault for playing this deck, but it was also maybe it was my fault for playing that Evolving Wilds. But all in all, the deck is exactly what Dev said it was. It's a deck of answers. Um, and if you pull the right answer, there is an answer to absolutely everything in the meta. This deck does have the answers for that. This deck has uh, the ability to deal with almost everything in the meta. Uh, complete all-stars, shining lights in this deck, and I am going to have to play with it more in the future. I did not realize how hard you could shut Teamer Energy down with this card. Um, we did it twice, so anyone just you know coming in for the wrap-up or whatever going to catch the wrap-up, go back, check the video out. Two times we got uh, Sorcerer Spyglass out on Teamer Energy, and it was beast. Mm -hmm. Think Solemnity's good? Try Sorcerer Spyglass. It's much better. They can have all the energy they want, and it's not going to do anything. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't think it was as good against Sultai Energy because they don't run the Bristling Hydras, and they don't have the Whirler Virtuosos. So uh, mm -hmm. maybe not not in that matchup, but in the Teamer Energy, definitely. Mm -hmm. And then. Um, get rid of these Gideons. I don't know whether they're for. Don't see any real use for them. Use those two slots, though. You either two Bantu's Last Reckoning or two fate, um, two uh, Fumigates in here. And um, you could probably drop the one Gifted Aetherborn, as I, I rarely needed the other one. However, he is really, really good against Teamer. Uh, Carney T, I wanted him. Duress, I can't say you get rid of that. I can't say get rid of Duress. I can't say get rid of Doomfall. Vraska's Contempt is just needed. Maybe you can't get rid of any of these. Maybe, but these you could get rid of. Uh, you can't get rid of Ixlon's Binding. Matter of fact, one of the cast outs main board could probably be an Ixlon's Binding. Um, these four cards could go. Or just throw one of these into the land base main board. I mean, it only costs two to sack it, so I mean, if you just have to have, you know, uh, revolt, then uh, that's it. So, hey guys, that's um, that's all we've got for the day. I I think the deck is strong. Add your fumigates to it. Um, if you're going to run it this weekend, add fumigates to it. You don't need those scavenger grounds. Take take one of the four evolving wilds out. Throw one scavenger grounds main board, and let that be your your scavenger grounds. Uh, you can spend two mana to sack it for your revolt. It's not that big of a deal. If you can do it for field ruin, you can do it for um, you can do it for the scavenger grounds. Free up those slots. Get your fumigates in here. Uh, possibly even you know an additional Ixalan's binding in the sideboard, something like that. But I have like. Currently, I see these four slots, and the one card I would ask for would be Fumigate. If this deck had Fumigate, that's probably all it needs. Um, that being said, I hope everyone had a lot of fun. I know I had fun. We'll see you next time, here on the sideboard.